Complementarity Principle The complementarity principle is a fundamental idea in quantum physics, introduced by the physicist Niels Bohr in the early 20th century. It helps explain the strange and seemingly contradictory behavior of particles like electrons and photons that act both like waves and like particles depending on how they are observed. This principle shows that in quantum mechanics, the way we measure or observe something can influence what we actually see, and both aspects, wave and particle, are needed to get the full picture of reality, even though they seem to contradict each other. To understand the complementarity principle, it's essential to know a bit about the two types of behavior Bohr was dealing with. In classical physics, before quantum mechanics came along, particles and waves were thought of as completely different things. A particle, like a ball or an electron, was something with a clear, well-defined position. You could point to it, follow its path, and say, there it is. Waves, like the ripples on a pond, spread out over a region of space and didn't have a single location. You couldn't point to one specific spot and say, there's the wave, because it was spread out. However, in the early 1900s, experiments started showing that things like light and electrons behaved like both waves and particles. For example, light, which was usually thought of as a wave, could also show particle-like behavior in certain experiments. And electrons, typically thought of as particles, could behave like waves under the right circumstances. This dual nature of particles and waves was one of the strangest discoveries in quantum mechanics. One famous experiment that demonstrated this duality is the double-slit experiment. If you shine light or fire electrons at a barrier with two slits in it, the way the particles behave changes depending on how you measure them. If you don't watch them closely and just look at the pattern they make on a screen behind the slits, they form an interference pattern, which is a sign of wave-like behavior. It looks like ripples overlapping, as if the particles went through both slits at once, like a wave would. However, if you try to measure which slit the particle goes through, it behaves like a particle, and the interference pattern disappears. Instead, you get two distinct lines on the screen, as if the particles only went through one slit or the other. This bizarre behavior puzzled scientists for years. How could something be both a particle and a wave at the same time? Niels Bohr's complementarity principle offered a way to make sense of this mystery. According to Bohr, the particle-like and wave-like behaviors of quantum objects are complementary, meaning they are both necessary to fully describe the nature of these objects, but you can't observe both behaviors at the same time. In other words, how an object behaves depends on how you choose to measure it. If you set up your experiment to look for wave-like properties, you will see waves. If you set it up to look for particles, you will see particles. But you can't see both at the same time. This is the essence of the complementarity principle. Wave and particle behavior are two different, but complementary, aspects of the same reality. You can't see the full nature of a quantum object in just one experiment. You need to accept that both aspects are real, even though they seem to contradict each other. The idea of complementarity goes beyond just the wave-particle duality. Bohr believed that it applied to many other aspects of quantum mechanics as well. For example, the concept of uncertainty, as described by Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, is another form of complementarity. The uncertainty principle says that you can't precisely know both the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time. The more accurately you measure one, the less accurately you can measure the other. These two properties, position and momentum, are complementary. You can measure one or the other, but never both with complete precision.
Bohr's complementarity principle suggests that quantum mechanics requires us to think differently about reality. In classical physics, we're used to thinking of things as having definite properties that we can measure. But in quantum mechanics, the properties of a particle, like its position or its wave-like nature, aren't fixed until we observe them. Before we make a measurement, quantum objects exist in a sort of indeterminate state, where they can't be described fully as either a wave or a particle. It's only when we measure them that we see one aspect or the other, depending on how we look. This way of thinking was revolutionary, because it challenged the classical view of an objective reality that exists independently of observation. In quantum mechanics, the act of observing can affect the outcome of an experiment, and this is a central feature of the theory. The complementarity principle reminds us that our classical ideas of how the world works, where things are either one way or another, don't apply in the quantum realm. Instead, we have to accept that objects can have complementary properties that seem contradictory but are both necessary to describe the full nature of reality. The complementarity principle also has implications for philosophy and how we think about knowledge and reality. In classical physics, the idea was that if we could just measure things accurately enough, we could know everything about the universe. But quantum mechanics, and particularly the idea of complementarity, suggests that there are limits to what we can know. We can't observe every aspect of a quantum object at once, and the way we choose to measure it influences what we see. This has led to deep discussions about the nature of reality and how much of it we can ever really understand. In addition to its impact on physics and philosophy, the complementarity principle has influenced other fields, such as biology, psychology, and even art. The idea that two seemingly opposite things can both be true, depending on how we look at them, resonates with many other areas of study. In biology, for example, the debate between nature and nurture, whether genetics or environment shapes us, can be seen as a form of complementarity. Both genetics and environment are necessary to fully understand human development, even though they are different forces. In psychology, similar ideas arise when trying to understand human behavior. A person's actions might be influenced by both internal thoughts and feelings, mental states, and external factors, environmental influences. These two perspectives are complementary in understanding why people behave the way they do. Just like in quantum mechanics, you need both perspectives to get the full picture. In conclusion, the complementarity principle is a key idea in quantum mechanics that helps explain the strange dual nature of particles and waves. It shows that in the quantum world, reality is not as straightforward as it seems. Instead of thinking of objects as either waves or particles, the complementarity principle teaches us that both descriptions are necessary, even though we can't observe both at the same time. This idea has far-reaching implications for how we think about the universe and our place in it, and it challenges our classical notions of what it means to know and understand reality.